It's time for episode three. And no, I'm not gonna get all angsty and explain why I think the Jedi are evil. It's the third episode of common PC building traps you should be looking out for, whether you're a Padawan preparing for your first build, or you spend weekends with your family bragging about all the fully armed and operational battle stations you've put together. Let's start with something that you should watch out for before you even begin physically assembling the computer. Balancing your build. This means you want to be sure that you're choosing components that will work with each other as a coordinated, sensible whole or computer. For example, if you've decided to go with something like a low-end Pentium CPU, don't pair it with a $600 graphics card, as your underpowered processor will likely be a bottleneck in games, not allowing your graphics card to operate at peak performance. Not what you want after spending all that money. In a similar vein, doing things like buying a 1200 watt power supply for a single video card setup, or buying 64 gigs of RAM for watching YouTube videos, not good ideas. So think about what you want to do with your system and whether the parts you're buying make sense for each other before pulling the trigger. Then after you've picked a logical set of components and you're putting it all together, don't forget to manage your cables. That's right, you should do this even if you're using a case that doesn't have a side panel window as the benefits aren't purely aesthetic. Proper cable routing can not only save you a lot of headaches whenever you have to open up your system to make an upgrade or repair, they can prevent your components from being choked up with dust as poorly managed cables that cross every which way inside your case tend to be dust magnets and can eventually restrict airflow. And you don't have to do some sort of world-class cable management job to reap the benefits. Just use the routing holes in your case, plus a few zip ties for a massive improvement versus having a cable jungle like some kind of barbarian. And while we're on the subject of cables, when you finish your build and are getting ready to plug in your monitor, for the love of all that is good, don't plug it into your motherboard if you're rocking a discreet graphics card. Although software solutions that allowed you to plug your monitor into either one and still reap the performance benefits of your GPU once appeared as though they had a bright future, these days a connection to your motherboard will completely bypass your graphics card, leaving you wondering why you're getting 5 frames per second in a game where you were expecting to get 500. Moving right along with the plugging things in theme, don't assume that all the RAM slots on your motherboard are the same. If you've got multiple sticks of RAM, but not enough to fill every slot, maybe you've got two sticks and a four slot board. Check your motherboard manual and follow the manufacturer's recommended configuration. Typically, this means using every other slot. Not following the instructions could result in your RAM not running in a faster multi-channel mode. And while memory speed doesn't have a massive impact on performance except in very specific applications these days, there also isn't a good reason to miss out on a small boost that properly inserted RAM can give you. So you've got everything plugged in properly and you've been using your computer for a short while, but something seems amiss. You find out that a BIOS update from your motherboard manufacturer might be the cure for your ills. However, you need to be very careful when flashing your UEFI BIOS. If something goes wrong during the process, like a power outage, you could end up irreversibly bricking your motherboard. So, it's a good idea, especially if you haven't invested in a motherboard with a dual BIOS or a uh, BIOS flashback feature that lets you reflash it even if it is somewhat bricked, it's a good idea to be plugged into a battery backup or a UPS while you are doing it. I mean, and at the very least, don't do it during a thunderstorm. You don't want to be out the 200 bucks you spent on your board just because Mother Nature decided to have a little tempest tantrum. 
So hopefully this series has helped you in your quest to have a mistake-free building experience, but what are some of your go-to tips for PC assembly? Let us know in the comments and maybe you'll see your ideas in episode four, where we'll give you frustrated builders out there some new hope. Tired of companies tracking what you're doing on the internet? TunnelBear VPN is the simple to use VPN that does the same things as VPNs that are more difficult to use. So how could you go wrong? Basically, TunnelBear is a quick download. It's available for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. They even have a Chrome extension that lets you just press a button, boom, I want to tunnel through this country, and there you go. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption and your public IP address gets switched so you can show up as though you're in a different country to the online services and websites that you use. They have a great privacy policy and it is free with no credit card required to try with 500 megs of data. So you don't have to take my word for it at all. Check it out at tunnelbear.com slash Linus and at that link, when you sign up for an unlimited data plan, you can save 10%. Woo! So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, uh, leave a comment with suggestions for future videos, check out our other channels, and don't forget to subscribe.